Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer live pop-up chat, although rather, let me just fiddle with the microphone a minute. Um, there you go, it's just not pointing in the right direction. There we go, that should be a little bit better. Um, hello and welcome. Like I said, this is a, it's a pop-up chat, but it's a scheduled pop-up chat, so I hope a lot of you managed to get the notification. Now, of course, this chat does have a topic and a theme, so, um, I, so the moderators will... Um, if there's anything that's kind of off topic, I think it's kind of appropriate to perhaps have it removed from the live chat uh, because obviously, you know, this is incredibly sensitive and important as well to remember Diana, Princess of Wales and her life because of course tomorrow, or rather in the UK in about three hours, is the 22nd anniversary of Diana's sad passing. So I don't really want any other issues or noise to kind of get in the way of this chat. So I do ask that everyone keeps their comments on track, on focus to Diana. Um, and you can share your memories of Diana here. I'm going to talk about kind of, you know, my experience of not meeting her. I've never ever met Diana, but I'm going to talk about my experience of living in a time when she was alive because of course so many people alive today of course because it's been 22 years you know people that were only very very small or you know a lot of people weren't even born when Diana was alive so a lot of people kind of look at Diana through um, through history through seeing pictures but have never really experienced Diana and I think myself and probably most of my viewers uh, I think we'll have experienced life with Diana in the media when she was alive. So I want to kind of talk about that. And I would also like to, I think, get some perspective. If we do have any younger viewers, I would like them to kind of give your opinion on on what you think about Diana having not experienced and lived in her lifetime. So that's kind of the angle that that I want to go at, I think. Uh, now, I did have some notes. In fact, where have I put my book? It's somewhere down here. I know you're getting probably a good look at my tiara. Um, as you know, I have, um, I'm, I do have a Cambridge Lovers Knot tiara, which is a royal family tiara, but it is, it is one um, that was given to Diana whilst she was married to Charles. So obviously, um, you know, this is a fairly good replica. Uh, not exact, but it is a fairly good replica. So I'm wearing that one today in honour of Diana. I do, of course, have the um, the Spencer family tiara as well. Like I say, I do have some notes, but I don't necessarily want to rigidly stick to them. Uh, this is also, you know, a, a chat show as well. That's why I'm doing it live, is so that I can interact with, with you guys. So the one thing I wanted to start off by saying is... Um, it is literally three hours before the 31st of August and of course she sadly passed in 1997 and I will talk about where I was, um, how I found out about it in 1997. I was what, 15? I think I was about 15, 15 in 1997. So, you know, I was old enough to remember and have lived through Diana. So I suppose my earliest memories of Diana I don't think I actually have one because she was just everywhere. She was just part of life. She she was just part of social conscience. You know, growing up having having the you know the, the tabloid newspapers on the breakfast table every day. You you saw her. She was just a familiar figure. She was a familiar face. And of course, the press and the media had this v ferocious appetite. Um, for Diana. There was a massive Diana consumption here in the UK and all around the world. I mean, she was a global superstar. She, she, you know, was accused of, of eclipsing, you know, the, um, all the blood royals. And in a way, you know, she was picked up on by the media and they did build her, build her up and build her up and build her up. And, she was there. She was just there. I just, I don't really remember the first time that I knew about her. I just knew that she was, she was important. She was on the newspapers. There wasn't really a week that went by where, where she wasn't on the newspapers. So she was just always there. So like I say, I don't really have a really early memory of Diana. She was just there. And of course, I remember all of the Wars of the Waleses things. I remember, 
I remember watching the Panorama interview. Um, I, I, rem I remember it being advertised. I, I was actually, uh, I watched it in bed with, with my mother because my dad was out. He used to play in a band and he was out playing in a band. And it must have been a, a Friday or a Saturday night, maybe even a Sunday. I think it was definitely weekend because my dad was out playing. Um, so I watched it in bed with my mom, and I think it was nine or ten o'clock at night, even nine or ten. Um, so I remember watching it, and we, we were both there in the covers watching it. This, you know, this explosive interview. Then, you know, I saw all of the divorce and the relationship with Dodie that went on, um, and then obviously it happened, and I woke up. It was a Sunday morning here in the UK, and I remember waking up. I was always fairly early at getting up. It must have been seven o'clock, maybe maybe seven, half seven in the morning. I woke up and I heard my mum and dad's TV on and they were talking. So I kind of went in there and I looked up at the TV and I said, what's going on? I knew something was going on. And I looked up and there was the headlines. And at that time, she hadn't been pronounced that she'd passed. Um, she was still classed as being involved in a serious incident, in a serious car crash. Um, and of course, we got the photographs coming back of the Mercedes. And then literally it was about an hour, maybe, that the news actually filtered through, of course, that she had sadly passed. And then I remember it was the first time ever that I'd, I'd actually felt or experienced real, palpable, tangible grief for someone that I didn't even know. And it was such a weird feeling. It felt really, really strange, really, really weird. Um, like I say, you know, I, I'd never really lost anybody in my family at that point. Um, so it was the first time that I'd felt actual real grief. And here in the UK, a lot of people went through a full on grieving process. And it was weird because most people in the UK have not met Princess Diana. We hadn't met her, but yet there she was. She had penetrated our lives. She had that thing. Whatever it is that makes someone really, really special, she just radiated personality and presence. And she touched people in ways that I don't think anyone else really has since Diana. Um, I think I've said this in a, in a previous chat a long time ago, that... It, it's very, very rare that somebody comes along that can do that, that can affect people that don't even know them to the point of when they're gone, they actually grieve. Um, it's very, very, very rare that people can do that. And like I say, I don't think, in my view, my own personal opinion, that there is anybody alive today that has kind of has that feeling that Diana evoked for me personally. Um, I don't think anyone has done that since Diana. So I feel really blessed to have lived in a time where she lived. And like I say, there are many people that will view Diana through very different eyes, through a very different lens, because, you know, they were born, you know, after her passing or they were very, very, very young when when she passed. So they, they may not really experience that feeling of who and what she what she is. They look at her through the spectrum, through the lens of the history books. Um, yeah, and I remember the funeral. It, it took a week to prepare the funeral. I remember the body, her body being flied back. Prince Charles went out there, um, brought her back. Oh, it was just so sad. I remember the funeral. The funeral, I think, was on a Sunday, I think it was. And I remember listening to... Elton John and performing Candle in the Wind. Ah, oh, you know, he, re he rewrote Candle in the Wind. Uh, Goodbye England's Rose. And I remember that being, you know, a record-breaking single here in the UK. In fact, I still don't think that single has been outsold. I think it is the biggest selling single ever here in the UK. The funeral, it was just so touching. It wasn't a full-on um, royal funeral. Um, it definitely wasn't a full-on state funeral. It was kind of halfway between. It was halfway between a, a family funeral and a state funeral. It kind of fused the whole thing. And of course, it was based upon the Queen Mother's own funeral. And the Queen Mother hadn't passed away at that point. So it was based very much on the Queen Mother's plans. Because of course, they hadn't put any plans into action for Diana. Because no one expected her to pass at that time. 
Uh, although she had made a will, um, and of course, you know, her estate was divided up between her boys, and actually she left some for her godchildren as well, which um, in a separate letter there was provision for that, but her family actually got that overturned. Um, so the godchildren got to select, I think, what, one item from Diana's, from Diana's estate, but all of the rest was kept in trust until until the boys turned 30. So when they were 30, they got their share, which was estimated to be around about £10 million um, at the time of inheriting that money, because I think she left an estate worth about £21 million, uh, which of course would have gone up in the intervening years. So it was roughly around about £10, 10 million-ish. Um, so that was the legacy of her estate. And of course, her jewels also went to went to her boys. And we have seen some emergence of the jewels coming out. We've seen Catherine wearing some. We've now since seen Megan wearing some. Um, oh, I don't. Just let me. I'm going to go up and read some of the some of the comments because I know that some of you will be having lots and lots and lots to say. Um, anyway, I'm just going to go to the bit where I where I joined the chat. Here we go. Um, Lynn says I was 31 years when Princess when Princess Diana passed. I remember it well. Alexis was 10 years old and start when you started watching Diana. She was a reason you watched the royals. Uh, Roz says Princess Diana was a beautiful woman with, with a beautiful spirit. She deserved better than the royal family. Flossmog Payne says it was a sad day. Um, let's have a look. Uh, so, so, sorry if I'm missing some comments out. Sue says, uh, hello all, I remember coming home from the state fair and seeing it on TV. I was just shocked and crying. I also remember at 17, staying up all night to watch her wedding to Charles. Um, B Panda says, the first time I noticed her was her kindergarten pose with the see-through, oh yes, that see-through dress with the legs. Yes, I remember that one. Uh, 9499 says, she was the greatest human being. Nobody could ever, ever forget her, a beautiful lady beautiful and after she was married in 1981 and I can't believe it's 22 years I really really cannot believe it. it's been 22 years that is just incredible how that time has just flown uh, Fiona says my earliest memory is from the engagement announcement and then watching the wedding live here in Canada with my mother uh, Grief 5 says can you just see Princess Diana and Princess Charlotte running barefoot through the grass and giving all of her grandchildren sweet hugs and kisses. She would have been the best grandmother. I mean, she really would. I think William and Harry have both said what a wonderful grandmother she would have been. I think she would have been the naughty nan. She would have been the cheeky, naughty grandma uh, that would have given them sweets and, you know, <laughs> let them stay up past their bedtime, took them to theme parks, um, did all the things that she did with William and Harry. Uh, I think she would have been a fun ma. Uh, not a grandma, a fun ma, definitely. And it is such, you know, it's a shame when we have things like royal births or royal, you know, weddings, William's wedding, Harry's wedding, the births of their children. That is times when, you know, in those photographs, you know, not visually, but, you know, you can almost see a gap where she should be. Um, and yeah, it's such a shame that, that she can't be here to experience that. But she is in spirit. Andrea B says, I'm Jamaican, so I was always aware of Queen Elizabeth because of my parents. Um, I stayed up to watch Diana's wedding and thought she was very sweet, earnest and kind and beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, wearing the Spencer tiara. Um, just looking radiant and gorgeous. Um, elderly Poodle says, she died on the night of my husband's 40th birthday. Someone ran in and told us. I never went to sleep that night. I could not believe it. Shock. Everyone, the nation was shocked. Everyone descended upon Buckingham Palace. They were leaving flowers. It was all over the news. I mean, the TV was literally taken over. Here in the UK, literally stopped. Everything just stopped. Um, you know, the announcements came on. <sighs> yeah, it, it was everywhere. And I, I remember crying at the funeral as well. I definitely cried. I watched it on my. In fact, I watched it in the room just just through that wall there. I watched it in the in the room opposite, and um, I remember curling up on the sofa like this, and I was watching it, crying. Um, Michelle says Diana was a huge star here in the states. Her beautiful image graced every magazine and newspaper for years and years, and even after she went, you know, she was still um, for a very long time 
being put on the front covers. Um, yes, it was to sell papers. Uh, yes, it was to satisfy still the public appetite for Diana stories. Um, and yes, it was to keep everything kind of going, I think. Uh, but from from her, her passing was was forged a new relationship with the press. Of course, you know, Diana was notoriously hounded until the very end. You know, there were photographs taken of her in the wreckage. If you look on Google, if, if you're that way inclined, they are there. Um, although not all of them. I am sure there are many, many more that, that were actually seized by the police that never made the light of day. But there are some out there. So she was truly hounded until the very last moments of her life. Um, and I don't really want to get into any of the conspiracy theories surrounding her passing. Um, but yes, she was hounded to the very ends. And since then, the press has... OK, now this is where you're going to laugh. <laughs> but the press um, basically did draw back. You know, gone were the days when they would you know, chase a royal down the street. They still did it with celebrities, but gone were the days when they would hound royal children. Gone were the days when they would hound a royal. Um, and I think for a very good number of years, that balance was kept. Now, in today's world, I feel like we're slipping back. I feel like there's... The press almost wants to press the reset button on that. Um... And for whatever reason, I feel like it's going in retreat a little bit. Yes, still gone are the days when they they chase around with cameras papping, you know, royals running off or hiding themselves with bags. You don't see that anymore. But what you what we are getting most definitely is hounding in a different way. We're getting hounding through through fake news. That's where we're getting the hounding from. So I do feel like things are going backwards a little bit, and I think they need you know, putting back to kind of almost how they were. Uh, Sue says she will always be the people's princess. I live in the US and felt like she was our princess also. She touched so many hearts all over the world. Yes, it was a British Prime Minister, um, Tony Blair at the time, who first called her uh, the people's princess. He made it in a speech. And of course, he, had, he hadn't been Prime Minister for very long at that point. And I think it was a speech that had been worked on for him and they, they called her the People's Princess and that that stuck. And still to this day, she's referred to as the People's Princess. Samantha Allen says, I was getting ready for work. At first, I thought they were talking about the Queen Mother. No, it most definitely wasn't. Dory says, I was 25 or so years old when she passed. I was in bed when they announced it on TV. Such a terrible day. It was. It was terrible. Um, and I remember we actually went out to the garden centre on that day and the roads were eerily quiet. Literally, people were just staying indoors. Um, Andrea says, I'll never forget the night I learned that she had died. I was in a heated flight, a fight with your husband when the announcement was made. We drove home in absolute silence. It was that shocking. It really, really was. Um, Christine got up early on the day for the funeral so you could watch before work I think like a lot of people overseas Annette says of course it was it was a holiday here in the UK well not a holiday but everyone was given the day, given the day off to watch it um, Annette says in the US I remember her as a celebrity not, not in a bad way but it was after her divorce and she was beautiful the princess could really dress she could Back then, being turned out well wasn't a bad thing. And of course, just before her passing uh, and after her divorce, William himself had suggested that his mother auction off her dresses. And of course, she did. She had that famous auction of her dresses where they made millions for charity. And, um, and yet those dresses are still out there, worth more money than, than ever before. But yes, William did come up with, as a child, well, no, he was about my age. He was, he was about 16. He was about 16, I think. Yeah, he was definitely 16. Uh, so I was definitely 15 at the time. Because um, I'm right in the middle between Harry and William in terms of age. So there we go. I'm the missing brother. No, um, so it was William had this wonderful idea of auctioning off her dresses for charity, which she did. And of course, they are still out there. 
Uh, this landing says it was a bank holiday and we were going to collect my parents. I heard the news in the car radio. I thought I had misheard. I didn't see. I will, will never forget, rather. Oh, no, I, you said I didn't see. Kelly says, was that my boyfriend's at the time high school reunion? Wow. Yes, yeah, stopped in your tracks. A Davis was 13 when she married Charles and 30 when she passed. Uh, she was a very important part of my development as a young woman and I loved her even though I never met her. She was beautiful inside and out. And of course, you know, her memory... Well, okay, so just before um, her divorce, she had actually um, distanced, distanced herself from a lot of her charities. Of course, when, as Princess of Wales, she was patron of hundreds of charities. And while she was still finding herself, she wanted a more international role. So she she basically gave up a lot of her charities um, and only kept about five or six of them. And uh, then she obviously did the landmine campaign, which was one of the last things that she did on the international stage. But she wanted a more international role. Um, but of course, after her passing, there was the Diana Fund. Uh, and, you know, we now have the, the Diana Award. And, you know, money is still pouring in. Uh, to to help her charities and her causes. So that is still going ahead today. Um, let's go up a little bit. Uh, let me see if I'm... Oh, have I jumped all the way down to the bottom already? I think I may have done. Uh, Sue Larson says, I bought the cassette of England's Rose by Elton John and listened to it over and over. It was, I think, and still is, um, the the highest sold song ever. And yes, I remember it on cassette. For those of you who don't know cassette, <laughs> how do you explain a cassette to a young person? I have no idea. Um, Ron says, Diana made the royal family relevant and she passed that on with her boys. Otherwise the world would ignore them the way uh, they do the rest of the world's royal families. She did re revolutionise within the royal family how to bring up a royal child. She introduced William and Harry to you know, soup kitchen, soup kitchens, the homeless. She took them to theme parks. She understood that she wanted them to be brought up as normal as possible. I mean, of course, no royal child is ever going to be normal, even if you don't have a title. You know, Zara, um, her, her brother, Peter, you know, Archie, to an extent, is is never going to be normal. They can try as much as they want to, you know, bring them up as normal as possible. But the likelihood is, you know, Archie will go to a private school. Um, he will attend all, you know, the royal events. Um, he is still a member of the royal family and in line to the throne. So um, Diana got the right balance. She brought them up knowing, knowing where they were in life, knowing that they were privileged, but also respecting that privilege. And I think both both boys have have got that. They they both respect the privilege that they have and they haven't forgotten the things that Diana showed them, like the homeless, um, and all the different and I think they understood that they had what other people didn't have. Um, yes, their lives are very, very different to, to ordinary normal people. Uh, oh, let me just check my... I'm not quite sure my battery pack is working. Let's just plug it in. I don't want to cut off before I finish the chat. Uh, let's just make sure that's in. Let me just check... Sorry, I'm just I'm just checking my battery to make sure that I'm actually even plugged in. Um, there, I think... I think I'm plugged in. There we go, because I am speaking on the phone. Uh, but I don't think William or Harry have forgotten you know, the experiences that, that Diana gave them. And I think that was very, very useful and important for them to have. And that wasn't given before. The Queen, Charles, um, you know, other royals have not had that grounding that Diana gave William and Harry. And, you know, I, when George, Charlotte, Louis, Archie are all older, I am sure William and Harry will do the same with them. I'm sure that will be passed on as well. And of course, Meghan and um, Catherine as well. So, um, you know, they are privileged. They do lead a privileged lifestyle, but it's important that they know that, 
that other people don't have what they have, that they are lucky, that they are different. They, they are the exception, not the norm. And I think they do know that. Um, and that was what Diana brought to the royal family. Uh, sorry if I'm skipping a few. Uh, hey, Sam the King says people born after nineteen nine after nineteen ninety seven don't have that emotional connection you talk of. Yeah, I can imagine that. I and we do we do have that this emotional connection with her. Even now, when I when I watch things about about her passing, when I watch the coffin go by, when I see the car, I feel like tearing up. Um, I get I feel that real sense of sadness. Um, that perhaps people born afterwards just don't. Um, and of course, at the time when it happened, I remember we were all thinking, what impact will that have on the boys? What impact will her passing have on William and Harry? And of course, it turned out later and later that it did have a profound impact on their mental health and their mental well-being, which of course spawned them to, you know, to work on their heads together and everything they've done to champion releasing the stigma about mental health and of course Harry has taken on you know lots more lots of Diana's work to do with, with landmines um you know William does a lot with, with the homeless with the uh, sh shelter charity so a lot of her causes are being championed and carried on by her boys which I think is a really really good thing uh, sorry, sorry if I'm skip I am literally skipping all the way down to the bottom now. Uh, MS MSNB2012 says, VHS was like a DVD. <laughs> Similar. Maybe about several times thicker. But yeah. Um, Cynthia says, I am the same age as Diana. I know she would be so proud of William and Harry. I wish the media would be more respectful of what they have been through. Uh, I agree. And yes, she is most definitely uh, missed. Lisa Kellen says, Prince William was 15. And Prince Harry was thirteen in nineteen ninety seven. He must have been older than me because I was a, I'm younger than him, and he was the last. Unless he was nearly sixteen, uh, maybe I was literally just turned fifteen, um, and he was just about to turn sixteen, because I'm 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 a year younger than him, and I was in my final year at school. So, and we leave at sixteen, so I had to have been. Um, Connie says, I've heard Harry derided as woke. He's woke because of his mother. Um, Sue Larson says, a cassette back then is like a DVD now. And Magnus says, they were accusing her of being desperate for attention, so she minimised the charities that she decided to work with. I think it was all about a reset for Diana. She she was on to the next chapter of her life. Um, and I think, she, like I say, she, she wanted a more... Uh, a bigger role on the international stage. And I I think she was pretty much going to get what she wanted. I think the government of the day, Tony Blair's government, was probably in support of what she could have done. Um, and I think it was probably going to head that direction. But of course, we'll, we'll never know. We will also never know about her relationship with Dodie. You know, w would it have been something that would have carried on and had legs? Personally, my own personal opinion is that I don't think it would. I think it would have fizzled out. Um, lots of Diana's relationships that she had in the past, you know, let's not get into all of those, but a lot of them were quite intense and then fizzled out. So I think, I think the Dodie relationship would have fizzled out. Um, however, we don't know. She could have gone on to have got married and had children with him. Um, if not him, she would have probably gone on and, you know, found a relationship and had children with someone else, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, she was just about to start her life. She was 36. And the one thing I think about now is I'm 36. She was the same age as me now when she passed. That's scary. That is really, really scary. You know, I think about how much of my life I've got ahead of me. And now that I'm the same age, it's even more poignant because it's like I am that age um it's just it really is shocking how young she was and of course back when I was 15 she looked you know like an adult a, gr a grown-up woman which is which, which is of course what she was uh but you you see her differently and now when I'm the same age it's like oh, oh she was young she was very very young but also what she had accomplished in her life up to that point 
Um, she accomplished so, so much. Uh, Becky Ray says, I was so shocked I did, it didn't seem real. My heart broke for her sons. I didn't care much for Prince Charles, but when he went and brought her home, I started feeling better about him. Um, he, he did a good thing for her there. Um, Mrs BSN says, I have been trying to avoid everything related to her today. I got up for an early Sunday morning prayer service and heard the news uh, and was off the entire day through the, through the funeral. Um, yeah, it was just so sad. So, 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 so sad. Let's just zip all the way back, all the way back to the bottom. H.M. The King says, I would have liked to have heard Diana's uh, mother's feelings towards the whole situation. Family and the time she found out no parent should have ever had to bury their child. The one family member we did hear from most profoundly was, of course, Earl Spencer, who at the funeral delivered that very powerful speech about his sister and also an attack on, on the royal family. And, you know, I think after Diana's passing, the monarchy went through a really bad patch. It was at its lowest in terms of popularity for a very long time. Then... You know, after the after the 2000s, things started to pick up and things have been on a high for a very long time since then, actually. Um, so, so yes, you know, it's royal popularity and support kind of goes up and down in waves. I think at the moment we have had a lot of you know pressure on the royal family. What's been going on, you know, with with the royal feud what's been going on in the press with Harry and Meghan, what's been going on in the press with Andrew. Again, I don't want to talk about those topics in this chat. This is just about Diana. But I think at the moment, you know, we are maybe going into one of those dips um, unless things can be sorted out quite quickly, which I hope they will be um, on all counts. But, you know, it does go up and down in waves. But I, I still don't think the popularity of the Queen at the moment is particularly... Um, tarnished. I, I don't see in the newspapers any attacks particularly on the Queen, although again we've got Brexit and you know we've got some you know people that are very opportunistic um, attacking the monarchy, anti-monarchists, um, so of course they will always be very opportunistic when they can. Uh, yes, Diana did give up her security. She was offered uh, protection officers still even after divorce and she did turn them down unfortunately because I think if she'd had them I don't think we'd be in the situation where we are today I agree Patricia it did make her vulnerable and it, it was a fatal mistake but let's let's drill it down even more the real real fatal mistake was even if you couldn't prevent the actual accident itself the real fundamental error was that she didn't have her seatbelt on. If she'd had her seatbelt on, we could have, we could be in a totally different situation now. Yes, she would have been injured, but she may not have actually. It may not have been fatal injuries. Um, you know, if you've looked at the reports of of the actual crash, because she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, the the force of the impact kind of thrust her underneath the footwell so she was crumpled up in the footwell then the roof was kind of squashed and it gave her the internal injuries and also being compressed and pushed under the footwell was not good if she would had the seatbelt on she would have been a lot more she wouldn't have gone under and I think her bit of roof wouldn't have been smashed in, in enough to get her head so I think, I mean, a lot of the experts think that if she'd have worn her seatbelt, she may have been injured, she may have had cuts and bruises, she may have been, you know, had all the rest of it, but we don't think that she would have actually passed if she'd worn her seatbelt. So always wear your seatbelt. By the way, I don't know what's happening with my phone because uh, my battery pack doesn't seem to be giving it any power for some strange reason. I don't know why. Uh, let me just see if I can just tinker with it a little bit, see if that helps. Right, if I do cut off, it's because of my battery. Um, LJ Pilder says, thank you. I didn't know that either. Uh, Christine says, I hope she gets her HRH back again. Um, again, I mean, 
had she lived, I, I have a theory myself, and my theory is that, is that I think Charles and Camilla's wedding in 2005 was always going to be a fixed point. Um, and I think around that time, had she lived, it would have been a really good opportunity for the monarchy to really clear up about titles and all the rest of it. Um, I still think Camilla would have been would have been the Duchess of Cornwall and not titled Princess of Wales, even though technically Camilla is Princess of Wales. But it wouldn't have been good to have had Diana Princess of Wales and a technical Princess of Wales at the same time. So I think it would have been a good opportunity to reset Diana's titles. I think there could have been one of several options. I think definitely she should have been given back the HRH as the mother of a future monarch. The Queen could do that through letters patent. And also, I think she could have been made a princess in her in her own right of the United Kingdom. So she would have officially been Her Royal Highness, the Princess Diana, um, because of course she never was Princess Diana. She was always the Princess of Wales, and then Diana, Princess of Wales after divorce, which is different. Um, so they could have done that, or they could have made her a HRH and given her a Duchess title in her own right. She could have been. The Duchess of Clarence or the Duchess of something or other. So I, I do think it would have been a good opportunity to, to reset and give her back a bit of status, especially if she was actually working for the UK government or even continuing continuing some work representing the royal family, which could have happened in the intervening years, we don't know. Um, but William, when he's older, could potentially give his mother back posthumously, the HRH, and he could do that through, again, letters patent. He could he could backdate it in terms of he could say that any divorced mother of a of a monarch retains the HRH after divorce. And that would and he could say that 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 goes back the last 50 years, uh, which, of course, would include his mother. So it would give his mother back the HRH, uh, which I think is a possibility. I think it's what he could potentially do. Maybe. Um, H.M. The King says, don't understand people who haven't accepted Camilla yet. If William and Harry can, I don't see any other reason why one shouldn't accept her. Don't have to like her, but just accept her and Charles. I agree. I mean, she is an unmovable fixture in his life. And to be honest, she's been a good consort so far um, to Charles. And I think she will be a good queen consort as well. Um, a. Davis says, I think Diana had a profound effect on the royal family and its popularity. Do you think if Charles was allowed to marry Camilla originally, the royal family would still be relevant? Who knows? I mean, literally, who knows? H. M. the King says, I don't see William doing anything like that. I think he will let old wounds rest. Again, we really don't know what's in his mind. He is very determined. I mean, one of the things I think you don't really see with him, um, ne necessarily publicly, is how he will do things differently. He already indicated quite strongly in the Charles 70th documentary that he was going to do his version of being the Prince of Wales very, very differently to his father. And I think we will see a difference. I think William is quite strong-willed. Um, and I think whatever is on his mind, he will po probably keep close to his chest. I think he will keep things very closely guarded until the time that he is able to act upon it. And we don't know what's going on in his head. Um, he can be very guarded, especially around the press, for understandable reasons. And like I say, he's very determined. And if he wants something, he will get it. Trust me on that one. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Amanda says, I love that Diana led the way by example. She went about quietly doing good, lending her status to things that mattered. She made a huge difference by doing. She did indeed. Um, hey, Senator King says, strong willed, if you pardon the. Yes, yeah, strong willed. Will. Um, Mrs. Fiji says, I agree with you. I think William will definitely do something for his mother when he becomes monarch. I think when he's got the power to do something. I think he'll just do it. Um, I think he's that sort of person, to be quite honest. Let's go up again. Um, yes, PJR, Diana did did do some bleeding at the scene uh, due to the time they took, but she, she suffered a massive cardiac arrest um, 
on the way to the hospital in the in, in the ambulance and that was what really did it um, a myocardial infarction is the correct term don't ask me to spell it um, Yvette says very interesting clarification of the princess's title Diana princess of Britain has a nice well it does have a nice ring to it but it's not a title princess of Britain does does not exist uh, has a nice ring it was uh, more her character than just a paste on honorific um, yes and like I say some things we will never know some things will always be speculation Uh, Constance says, I know no one will ever replace her. I know I will never forget her. People will not forget her. She was she was very, very, very special. Coco says, Charles did an honourable thing to bring her home. Rumours had it that the Queen did not want her body brought to the Royal Guards as she wasn't royal at the time. No, I don't think so. I think the Queen was always respectful. And by that time, um, you know, the Queen knew the mood of the people. So, so no, I don't think. I mean, where else could she have gone? Seriously, uh, there was no, there, there wasn't anywhere else she could have gone. Realistically, uh, hey, Sandra King says Diana will always be Diana, Princess of Wales. She, she, yeah, she will. I mean, in most people's minds, when you hear that title, you see Diana. But of course, we will have a new Princess of Wales. I mean, technically, we've, we've got one with Camilla, but we will most likely have a new one with Catherine. I mean, you know, it's not decided, not for definite that William will become Prince of Wales, but I think it's pretty safe to say he will. Um, so then obviously that will make Catherine the Princess of Wales. Um, yes, most definitely uh, she was offered, she was offered royal protection. She refused it. She wanted to be free at the time. She wanted, she wanted, she felt like she was oppressed and controlled by the royal family. So she rejected it. Um, as the mother of the future king, she was offered that royal protection even after divorce. She said no. She declined it. Uh, if you read Ken Worf's book, who was her royal protection officer, he outlines that in detail in that book. Um, so most definitely she refused it. Sue says, we can all learn from, from Diana and be kind to one another. I completely, completely agree. Um, right, before I go, I just want to see if there's anything else that I want to particularly talk about. Um, yes, 10 years after her, her passing, there was an anniversary concert by William and Harry. Then, um, two years ago, we had the 20th anniversary and they commissioned a statue. William and Harry both commissioned a statue to be located, I think it's going to be in the White Garden at, Kens at Kensington Palace, for everyone to be able to go and see. And we don't know the design of this statue. We don't know when it's going to be out. We haven't heard any updated information. The only thing we do know um, is that, I think it was William that, that made a comment that they want it to to be right so that's they're, they're working on it he said it's coming um but they're still working on it so i just wanted to point that out that they are still working on the statue um okay i'm gonna leave it there for now i think we've had a 43 minute chat and before my phone dies on me um i wanted to close out this video properly i am literally in about two hours time at 12 a.m uk time that's 12 a.m gmt I will be premiering a video um, on my channel. So you are all welcome to attend the premiere. Um, and I'm hoping that you will find it interesting. So uh, you are more than welcome. The link is up there um, on the community page. Just click on it and set the reminder. But it is roughly about two hours from now. Um, I will also be going live for my weekly chat tomorrow. Um, of course, you can talk to me about anything royal then and of course i have my weekly vlog on sundays so it's a busy weekend it's a busy busy royal weekend right that's enough going on from me so i hope that you have enjoyed this video please share your memories your thoughts on anything diana in the comment section of this video thank you for respecting my wish that this chat remain about diana i really do appreciate that so 
Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also do hit the notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me in Shropshire, to you all and goodbye.